first off, who was Ettore Boyardi, aka Chef Hector Boyardi? Hello, may I come in? I am Chef Boyardi. You bet the latter is easier on the tongue, but it also doubles as the timeless brand name for your favorite canned Italian foods. Hector himself is unmissable if you pick up one of his products at your local grocer. In fact, that's his face on the can. And apparently, it's not a random mock-up avatar to sell you canned spaghetti sauce. So, what's Hector's story? Suffice it to say that when it comes to food brands and their human mascots, we all as potential customers must not be naive. For instance, Uncle Ben never existed before Mars bought over the brand, and Aunt Jemima was a racially insensitive brand name inspired by minstrel shows. In less problematic cases, Betty Crocker emerged from a Saturday Evening Post contest. And here's Betty Crocker herself. And the infamous Colonel Harlan Sanders of KFC never held the military rank often attributed to him. Looks like you've learned to make great chicken. Only way to serve our customers right. With this skepticism in mind, it's only natural to question the origins and qualifications of any food company mascot. However, there is at least one food brand whose namesake was not only real, but also a pioneering figure who revolutionized the way America perceived Italian cuisine. And that brand is the eponymous Chef Boyardee. Chef Boyardee completes spaghetti dinner. Because I always have room for my favorite meal, Chef Boyardee. And the real figure behind Chef Boyardee is Ettore Hector Boyardee a genuine Italian-American chef. Ettore's journey from an immigrant to the face of a thriving canned pasta empire is enough to restore faith in the American dream, even for the most discriminating folks amongst us. You can join us as we will now trace Chef Boyardee's journey into becoming the great brand Americans have come to love. Chef Ettore Boyardee was born in 1897 in Piacenza, Italy, and that name does sound like a tongue twister at first brush. Boyardi himself developed a passion for cooking at an early age, reportedly working as an apprentice chef in a hotel kitchen at the tender age of 11. By the time he was 16, Ettore had left home and arrived at Ellis Island just months before the outbreak of World War I. His older brother Paul, who worked as a maitre d' at New York's famous Plaza Hotel, helped him find his way into the hotel's kitchen. Boyardi quickly climbed the ranks and, astonishingly, became the head chef at the Plaza Hotel just a year later. His culinary skills were so impressive that he handled the catering at Woodrow Wilson's second wedding reception in 1915, which remains the most recent example of a presidential wedding. But how did Ettore Boyardi transform into the Chef Boyardi canned Italian food brand? While Boyardi's culinary career was already impressive when he moved to Cleveland, it was in Cleveland that his transition from Ettore Boyardi to Chef Boyardi truly began. In the Cleveland of 1924, when Ettore and his wife Helen opened Il Giardino d'Italia, Italian cuisine was not so popular in America, but their authentic cooking soon gained attention. His food was so popular that customers frequently asked for samples of his sauce, which he and his wife tried their best to provide from their lowly kitchen. When the demand for this special sauce became overwhelming, a local grocer stepped in to assist Boyardi in starting his first canning company. Hector was now inspired to assemble homemade meal kits with dried pasta and the famous marinara sauce in milk bottles, complete with instructions on how to prepare them. Boyardi even persuaded his brothers to move to Ohio to aid in the canning process, and production eventually shifted to Milton, Pennsylvania, where the empire was born. The revenue from these takeout orders soon exceeded the restaurant's income, leading Boyardi to establish a processing plant to meet the growing demand. And so, as at 1928, the Chef Boyardi Food Company was officially born. With the help of his brothers, Ettore launched the Chef Boyardi Food Company, whose first product was repackaged spaghetti dinners. Soon enough, Hector bought out the food processing plant and began producing and canning the sauce on a larger scale. However, there was one issue. Customers struggled to pronounce Ettore Boyardi's name. The Boyardi name remained perplexing to people, so the brothers decided to formally anglicize it and eliminate pronunciation confusion. 
it had become evident that customers, staff, and sales were struggling with the company's name. So, to make the business more accessible to American consumers, and for apparent marketing reasons, the company altered the spelling to Chef Boy RD, for phonetic simplicity, just as it reads on the packaging if you happen to come across one. In so doing, the brothers exhibited their marketing genius with this rebrand, and it was merely a phonetic rearranging of their family name. As Boyardee later explained, they love their family name, but sacrifices had to be made for the sake of progress. With the stock market crash occurring just a year after the company's launch, the Great Depression proved to be advantageous for Chef Boyardee and its affordable pre-packaged meals, which played a role in popularizing Italian food in America. By 1938, Chef Boyardee expanded further, relocating its headquarters to Milton, Pennsylvania, to facilitate the cultivation of specific tomatoes for sauce production. At one point, the company ranked among Italy's largest importers of olive oil and Parmesan cheese. The company also supplied canned food for American troops during World War II, after being commissioned by the U.S. military. This required the factory to run 24 hours a day. At the height of the war effort, the company employed up to 5,000 workers and produced 250,000 cans daily. This sacrifice earned Boyardi a gold star from the U.S. government. However, Italy's post-war government went a step further by awarding him a cross of honor and the title of King of the Spaghetti Dinner. And if anyone deserved that title, it was Boyardi. After the war ended, Boyardi had to choose between laying off workers in mass or selling off his majority stake. He ultimately opted for the latter and handed over to American Home Foods in 1946 for nearly $6 million, remaining as a spokesman and consultant for the brand until 1978. American Home Products later spun off its food division to the International Home Foods Division in 1996. ConAgra, which is the company presently carrying the Chef Boyardee line of products, acquired IHF in 2000, and currently owns the brand. Nevertheless, the people of Milton, Pennsylvania, from where it all started, still hold fond memories of Chef Boyardee. In 2013, the town honored him with a statue at the factory entrance. At that time, Chef Boyardee had provided employment for over 10,000 workers in the Milton area. Finally, on June 21, 1985, Boyardee died in a nursing home of natural causes. He was 87 years old. Boyardee was survived by his wife Ellen and his son Mario. He had five grandchildren. Boyardee was laid to rest in Chardon Township, Ohio, at All Souls Cemetery. You might recall us suggesting Ettore Boyardee wasn't the only member of his family involved with the company. His brothers and his wife were also staunch business partners, and it turned out one of the brothers had a granddaughter who took after Ettore Boyardee. If you look her up, you can find her cookbook recipes published in 2011, entitled Delicious Memories, Recipes and Stories from the Chef Boyardee family. Regarding the products that her uncle left as his legacy, Anna Boyardee admits that by now, they may have deviated from the original recipes. However, they still serve as an alternative for those who don't have the time to cook. She put it this way, There are people that are working, and their kids have to come home and make something for themselves. Even when I was growing up, my mom would whip out a can of the Chef Boyardee name product on certain nights when there just wasn't time to cook up a storm. Anna then added, I'm hoping that people learn these traditional recipes, and in turn, this helps to preserve them. Still, as previously noted, the Boyardee family is extremely proud of the Chef Boyardee legacy created by their great uncle Ettore. Even if canned pasta ironically doesn't actually exist per se in Italy. And in case you had any doubts, consider that Anna's cookbook includes Chef Boyardee's cherished recipe for the original spaghetti sauce that started it all. In conclusion, it's evident that Chef Boyardee was a genuine figure. Unlike fictional food personalities such as Betty Crocker, Aunt Jemima, and Uncle Ben, Chef Boyardee was indeed a cheerful, mustachioed Italian chef and far from being a dated Italian caricature. And in addition, Hector, as he was later rechristened, was a model immigrant we could aspire to emulate. He made a name for himself by cooking for discerning diners in New York and Cleveland, including a sitting president, long before his likeness adorned cans of the beloved pasta in sauce. So now we honor him with a hat 
tip and the chef's kiss. This goes out to Chef Ettore Hector Boyardi. May your pasta creations continue to inspire quick home-cooked meals for generations to come, even if they also involve a microwave. Remember to subscribe to our channel if you found this content valuable. We'll see you in the next one.